Living the cheap life is a game, a very fun game that most of the population doesn't even know how to play. Living on almost nothing. I read every single book I could at the library about scrimping and saving and not spending and debt freedom. Money saving is an art form that few are able to master. Most just do not understand the unknown. Debt freedom these days is the unknown. Not spending but still being happy is very unknown to people. We are known as consumers. Is it what you want to be known as? A consumer? There are the penny pinching times that taught me everything I know. Housing. Everyone needs a place to live. Unless you paid it for your house in cash right after moving out of your parents' house, you lost money. Why? Because a house is not an investment or an asset. A house is a liability. An asset makes you money, a liability costs you money. These numbers definitely change if you make more than a 20% down payment and aggressively pay off the mortgage. But if you were just like everyone else, you lost money. Think outside the box. Be unconventional. Be counterculture. Let your friends make fun of you. Unless you have an insanely high paying job, along with a significant other that also has a high paying job, you need to think small. Maybe a two bed, two bath home with a small yard that will work for you and your children, given they are the same sex. There are also many two bed, one bath homes out there. These are far less expensive than the standard three bed, two bus, or even two bed, two bus. Why? Because for some reason, an extra bathroom is sought after. Personally, I have two bathrooms and only use one. The other is for guests, but I'll be more than happy sharing just one. I have seen what happens when people get sick. I have seen what happens when people grow old. Large or far too large for a single person to typically handle after the age of 50. I am serious. If you live alone and have a two bad two bath house with a front and backyard, it wears on you very quickly. It is hard work owning a home. I'm just saying that there is a possibility that you will grow to an age where it gets to be too much. Have you ever visited your grandmother or grandfather unexpectedly and found a layer of dust on the record player and television along with tissues sitting all over the coffee table? Dirty dishes in the sink that windows and leaf freeze later that is growing a forest? Me too. It is sad. Keep things small. You might not ever have to worry about your house becoming too much for you to care for. I'm here to tell you that large families can live in small houses. When buying a home, never look for moving lady houses. You don't want those. Those are the ones that have been fixed up for sale at the highest dollar with new paint and flooring added. The ad might say new flooring, but they have likely chosen the cheapest snap. In bundle flooring, you can get for 98 cents square foot and just put it over the old laminate flooring. Or cement without pulling the old flooring up. Freshly painted. Yeah, that's about $200, but they raised the price by 5000 for the 200 worth of paint. Why? Because it looks pretty. Look for the messed up, ugly houses. You make the most money at the time you buy your house, not the time you sell it. Just make sure the foundation, electrical, and plumbing are solid. The rest is just smoke and mirrors. If you want a loan, I don't blame you. It is known, but these days, I much prefer calling a local landscaper for free truckloads of wood chips and planting trees that will provide me with the food for free. It's like growing your own money. In the times ahead, many neighborhoods will move away from loans and into growing food. These useless baby-sized fields in modern America take time to mow, time to weed, money to fertilize, 
and gives the owner nothing in return. Time for a change. Look up your drones and see what you can grow. But fruit trees with perennial vegetables provide the most bang for your buck. Transportation. I worked hard. I deserve a brand new car. Please keep in mind that a car is a huge depreciating asset. It's like buying a new couch. You can barely get rid of a used couch these days. Cars are turning into the same thing. I would always recommend it buying a used vehicle. The best deals are typically from private owners that have cared for their cars over the years. Maintain your vehicle regularly. Don't wait 8,000 miles for an oil change. If your car has a maintenance required signal, respond to it and get the oil changed. To keep your engine and brakes optimum condition, don't drive like a nutball. Keep your car as long as possible. Clothing. Everyone wants to look better than everyone else so they can stand out from the crowd and find a mate, right? Back in the early 1900s, children did not have shoes. They went to school barefoot. Typically, children will have three sets of clothes. One for school, one for chores and after school, and one for church. Maybe with the shoes, but mostly not. Now, our closets are filled to the brim. Crazy how times have changed, isn't it? Let me provide this little tidbit of advice. Never, I repeat, never ever purchase clothing online without seeing it in person first. If you know exactly what you're looking for, that's great. If not, do not buy it. 100% of the time, these purchases typically end up being a complete waste of money or the items doesn't fit properly. It's not true to size or the color looks awful with our skin color. So just stop and don't bother with that option. Learning to cook at home and cooking all of your meals at home is the fastest possible way to start saving money on food. May we be embarrassed to learn a new skill even if it seems like an embarrassment, I won't pretend that I drink only water. I drink a couple of other things as well, but never soda. I have not purchased soda in several years. Instead of sodas, make homemade lemon water. I find it odd that people will drive to a coffee shop and have someone make their drink for $5 or more every day. I have to wonder what is at the root of this masterful marketing scheme. Is it the feeling of luxury because someone else is making you drink? Is it a social interaction with the cashier? I don't get it. Just make your own coffee and go to a walking trail and sit on the bench. You will get the same people watching effect as sitting in a booth inside of a purposefully darkened coffee shop. The library is full of never-ending knowledge and entertainment. Books are never-ending. There are so many ways you can save on electricity. My electricity bill has been $40 or less per month for the majority of my adult life. Put your TV, computer, lamps or anything that has a plug on a power strip, no big deal. When you're not using it, turn it off at the power strip. Use only cold water when washing clothing. Hot water does not wash clothes cleaner than cold water. Once you start the journey of living on a very little, it becomes a game of how little you can live on. Then as your bank account grows and grows each and every month, another game ensues as to how much you can save each month. Living the cheap life is a game. A very fun game that most of the population doesn't even know how to play. This was the book Living on Almost Nothing by Amber Stock. I was really impressed by this book. Especially if you're planning to buy a house, there are lots of tips that save you money. And I'm actually still drinking soda, so I was really impressed that she just completely quit soda for several years. I don't know if I can actually do that. I even like sparkling water. But since she suggested lemon water, it seems really nice and fresh. Maybe I can give it a go. But for the cafe, drinking in a cafe, 
I kind of really agree with her. Now I sometimes go to cafes, but for a long time, most of my life, I was thinking, why people go to a cafe and pay for that expensive amount of money for just a coffee? For me, coffee is like just cheap drink, but somehow, if we order from the cafe, it becomes five to even sometimes just ten dollar. I was always thinking it's too expensive. But now I know people don't just go to a cafe drink coffee. It's kind of the feeling and experiencing the environment, the atmosphere. I mean, I see lots of Australians buying coffee just take away. But if we actually think about like Starbucks Lazy Blue 3, if you see the pictures or video, it's super impressive. If not a cafe lover like me, I'd love to visit. So in that case, I agree to pay for the cafe in the cafes. But everyday cafe, I would just make myself. Because it's way cheaper, there's no queue, and it costs you almost free. And somehow if you make yourself your cafe, when you visit the cafe, the feeling is really nice. I don't think I feel that good if I go to a cafe every day. Because people don't really appreciate if you see every day. Maybe that's why cafes and restaurants always develop seasonal menu. Lastly, I couldn't agree more about online shopping. Because I've been there. I failed. And she exactly mentioned what's the problem. Yeah, it doesn't fit perfectly. And if you compromise after you get it, you will see yourself in a few days. You don't wear it. It just doesn't feel quite right. But if you really insist on um, online shopping or if you live really far away from shopping center, I will give you my tip. Just order like two or three sizes you think it's your size. And when you get it, try it. Keep the best one and the others just return it. You need to pay a return fee, but you get the best fit and you didn't have to go to shopping center all the way. So if online shopping is your only option, this might be a small tip. I recommend this book to someone who enjoys living frugal life, down to earth, practical life. I learned lots of stuff from her book. I hope you do as well. Thank you for listening.